Hi guys and ladies, welcome to another video. Today we are doing a early impression video and if you've been following my channel you know a couple things. You know that I've been working my way through an Arij Ladore sample set. Uh, Russian Adam was kind enough to send me um, some fragrances and I've really enjoyed getting to experience fragrances that I thought were you know, well long gone that I had missed out on that I never get to smell. That was a true blessing. Um, I've already told him thank you many times. So thank you again though, Russian Adam. Also, um, out of the kindness of one of my subscribers, uh, Rachel K. Ning, I uh, hope I'm pronouncing your name right, by the way, please forgive me if it's incorrect. Uh, but she sent me some decants. One of the decants was an Arizadori, so I thought I only had one more Russian Atom fragrance that I was going to get to experience, and now I got a second one. Um, this is Arizadori's Atlantic Ambergris 2. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this fragrance justice at all, uh, because this is a first impression. I've been wearing it all day. I've got a eight hour dry down here, and I have a hour and a half dry down here on my right hand. So I have got to experience the dry down and I've got to experience the opening a couple times and I did wear it to bed once uh, before. So I have worn this um, a couple times, but still this is a very complex fragrance. I'm gonna do my best, but uh, this is one of those where you really might need multiple wearings to get to know the fragrance. Um, because if you know anything about ambergris, you know that ambergris is um, probably um, one of my favorite notes in perfumery because it has this mythical status to it. You know, ambergris uh, was discovered. I mean, who would have ever thought to put ambergris in fragrance to affix it to someone's skin, uh, that it would make it affix to someone's skin better? Uh, it's used as a fixative, but it's also an animalic ingredient. It comes from a sperm whale. For those of you that don't know what ambergris is, um, easy Google search will give you a ton of information on it, but I would highly encourage you to go to Galen's channel. He did an interview with a guy that literally wrote the book on ambergris, um, and I would encourage you to go, re to go watch that video. Um, great information on there, and it is, according to him, the people in the trade pronounce it ambergris, not ambergris. Um, it is supposed to be with that S at the end, so it's ambergris. Um, and so watch the video if you get a chance, that'll give you great information on ambergris. Uh, but it's an animalic that uh, comes from a sperm whale, and the sperm whale will, it, it does, it's only found in 1% of sperm whales as well, so it's a very rare ingredient, uh, and it's a very expensive ingredient. And basically what happens in a nutshell is the sperm whale will eat something that has a beak, like a cephalopod or whatever it may be, and um, that, that beak will disrupt the intestines of the sperm whale. The sperm whale will uh, create ambergris as a protection for itself, and then the sperm whale will either throw it up or it'll come out the back end. Scientists disagree on that fact. Most of them think now it comes out the back end, and it'll float through the ocean, and, it, and while it's floating through the ocean, it's picking up all of the ocean smells. It's picking up, you know, the sun beaming down on the water. It's picking up, um, well, it was inside of the sperm whale, so it has animalic facets as well. Now this, the, the ambergris that Russian Adam uses, according to him, is called white Irish ambergris. Now, ambergris is... Um, categorized by multiple different categories. Number one, uh, you have black ambergris. That's when it first comes up. Most of the time, that's not too useful in perfumery, I don't think, uh, because um, it's still, it hasn't had time to soak up enough of the sea. Um, and it, it, it hasn't had time to float in the ocean long enough to, to change colors. That's what happens the longer it floats, the, the whiter and whiter it will get. Gray ambergris is the next state, and then white ambergris is apparently the most sought after type of ambergris. That's the, that's the type of ambergris that perfumers really like to use because uh, according to the brand, this is what they say about ambergris, that um, it adds a pristine, fluffy, silky, slightly powdery, sweet and earthy with a bottomless oceanic depth that is truly unique. 
I can't argue with that. I mean, that's probably one of the best way to put it. Most of the times I don't like reading these briefs because they're just PR marketing from the brand, but I've learned that Russian Adams briefs are serious and his names are serious, Atlantic Ambergris. Um, it conveys a perfect picture. It alliterates, fantastic naming. Um, and this fragrance is unique because I have some experience with ambergris fragrances. If you have been following my channel, you will know I did a early impression on this little baby right here. This is Lesson de Modabla's Ombre Supreme. This is full bottle worthy, absolutely. Um, this is a brand that has really impressed me. I know this this uh, video is about Arige Ladori's fragrances, but I can't talk about real ambergris fragrances without talking about this, but these are two completely different takes. Look at the color. Look at the color difference, first of all. Um, these are completely different takes on the ambergris material. This is airy, ethereal, floral, sparkly. Um, this is almost like the best take on a blue fragrance. For those of you that don't know, um, Ambroxan, which is now very popular in fragrances like Sauvage, is synthesized in a lab. Uh, and Ambroxan, um, from my understanding, again, I'm not a specialist on this matter, uh, but I will tell you that from the research I've done, in my understanding, is Ambroxan is a, um, almost like a molecule that can be pulled off of ambergris. It, it gives... Uh, the smell, right? It's it's the smell portion of, of ambergris. Um, and it can be synthesized in a lab. Modern companies like that. They don't like the fact that every single piece of ambergris smells different. If I get one chunk of ambergris and you get another and we open them up and yours comes from Mexico and mine comes from New Zealand and Russian Adams comes from um, Ireland they could be completely different. One could be more animalic, one could be more salty, one could be more briny. Um, there's all kind of different... It's very hard for a perfumer to pin it down and say, okay, this is what the ambergris note is going to smell like if I get the ambergris today versus 10 years from today. And so to combat that, we have synthetic ambroxan. Um, now it's known as blue, a blue fragrance. That's why I say this is like the ultimate blue fragrance because it uses real ambergris to create that, um, that accord, right? This goes in a completely different direction. And I love Russian Adam for that because he always throws a curveball at you. You never know what to expect. And basically what they did here is they took spicy notes like cardamom, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, and mixed it with floral notes like jasmine sambac, white champaca, ylang ylang, and um, there's also a Russian pine note in the top, which is really interesting because I don't, I, I wouldn't have said there was pine in this had I, had I smelled it, although I do get a slight association, almost like a flash of um, filanagil. Uh, if you've ever smelled Filin Aguil from uh, Serge Luton's The Forest on Fire, that piney forest feel, not the fire and smoke part, but if you just isolated the piney forest smell and pulled it out of Filin Aguil, you'll get a little bit of the Russian pine in um, Atlantic Ambergris. Then what they did is they made the base resinous. So Russian Adams fragrances are known to be resinous. Um, you know, you get that. Some of his fragrances have this almost like flowing lava-like feel to them in the base because of that sweet myrrh, apopinax, uh, labdanum. Um, this also has cypriol oil in the base, which is a, a ingredient I've talked about that I really like in fragrances like uh, Journeyman, which is right here. And Frederick Mall's Promise. I love Promise. Huge fan of Promise. Uh, this also has oak moss and violet leaf and orris root in the base. And so one of my favorite, I'm going to try to take you through the scent from what, from just what I get. 
Some of it's ridiculous, but the imagery is all I can give you because this is the first time I've worn it. It's an initial impression. Uh, this came out in 2021, by the way, if I didn't mention the original Atlantic Ambergris, which I don't know how different they are. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts, Russian Adam, on what the differences between the first one and the second one are. Um, but the original came out in 2017. This one came out in uh, 2021. Uh, and there's one of my favorite YouTube um, personalities, period, when it comes to fragrances, is a gentleman named Thomas uh, from early Greek. I love Thomas. I could just watch his videos and he instantly just makes me feel better because of his demeanor and, um, you know, he'll smell a fragrance and just go, oh God, you know, I love, it just cracks me up every time. But Thomas did a first impression or maybe it wasn't a first impression for him. I don't know, but Galen brought this on one of their first meetups that they ever did. Uh, it's up on Galen's channel. I think you can still view it. And, but Galen brought the original from 2017 and Thomas smelled it and he had the quote of the entire meetup. He said, this just smells like life. This just smells like the story of life, man. And I thought, wow, that's pretty deep because I know what he's saying. He's saying that um, the ambergris gives this feeling of creation in the ocean, right? Like... Um, you know, what, what type of life started in the ocean and left the ocean, you know what I mean? Um, if you if you go watch an early Carl Sagan video, he'll talk about fish that uh, grew legs and crawled out of the sea kind of thing. This idea of creation keeps popping up in my head whenever I've been wearing this all day. And it's mostly Thomas's fault because he said that quote years ago and I never got a chance to smell this before. Now that I'm getting a chance to smell it, um, I understand exactly what he means by that. It does have this feeling of the story of life. Um, and everything plays together very smoothly. It um, So I read you the note tree, but let me tell you what I get. Because maybe um, talking about some of this will will give you an idea of my two cents on it. And... and some of the imagery here is ridiculous, but I did make notes as usual, although this time I'm uh, I, I'm a little skeptical if this is even right, you know, if this is, but this is the what I got, so I'm going to tell you. So it starts out very cinnamony, okay, and the first thing that popped in my head when I sprayed it is ginger snaps cookies. Have you ever eaten a ginger snap cookie? Um, especially like around the holidays, you get this ginger snap cookie that has like tons of ginger, almost like you stuck your head in a ginger bag. You didn't smell the ginger, but you smelled the dust that kicked up from the, from, from the, um, cinnamon, not ginger, cinnamon, sorry. Um, you smelled that cinnamon and you know, if you drop like a bag of cinnamon, it p puffs up this dust, uh, and you smell that dust and it's really harsh. You know what I mean? Um, that is almost what the opening smells like. Very cinnamony, very um, ginger snap cookie, okay? And then you take that cookie, that ginger snap cookie, and you throw it in the Atlantic Ocean. And you let it bob around for a little bit, like a piece of ambergris. And then you go get that cookie. And when you get it, you use a stick, a Russian pine wood stick. And you take that cookie, you fish it out of the water, and you throw it on your countertop, right? And you just throw the piece of wood there with it. You come back days later. The cookie has absorbed all of the um, saltiness from the sea. It's absorbed all that stuff. But it still has that ginger snap, that cinnamony ginger snap cookie feel underneath it all. You break it open after days of sitting on your counter and you smell it. And you get that hit of the ocean. You know, if you ever smelled something that's been in the ocean for a long time, you know it leaves a very distinct smell. Like you've ever smelled a boat that has been in the ocean for years and years and years. And they pull the boat out of the water, they hitch it to a trailer truck, and they pull it out with the trailer hitch out of the water. And that boat, you know, is discolored from the part above the water and below the water. And the part below the water, it looks completely different. The sun wasn't beating down on it, all that stuff. Uh, but it has a smell to it. Like if you go smell the boat after you've pulled it out of the water, you stand around it and you get that smell from the ocean, you know, 
being against the side of the boat for so long, it has that specific smell. This has that for sure. Um, it's a very um, emotional, contemplative, you know, there's, there's, um, there's a video that Galen did on Ansan's Mathique where it's, you know, looking out at the ocean um, and just almost like realizing just how wide it is, how big it is, how large it is, how small we are. And you're looking out at the ocean and uh, it just seems to go on forever. You can't see the end of the horizon. You know, it just goes on and on and on, waves crashing onto the beach and you're just standing there, one man looking out into the ocean kind of thing. Um, and this has a little bit of that quality. Like if you just wanted to sit down and read a good book at night and cuddle up and stay home and not go anywhere, spray this. Um, not that it wouldn't be a great fragrance to be around people because ambergris really draws people in. Um, also in the past, uh, there are stories of, um, you know, historically throughout different cultures, ambergris was used for many different things. In fact, King Charles II of England, his favorite dish was ambergris and eggs. They used to think it improved your libido back in the day. Uh, back in the day, which is a long time ago, um, when Charles, King Charles II was around, they would actually uh, take a piece of ambergris and grate it onto his eggs. Uh, so it was considered to be like an aphrodisiac. Egyptians burned ambergris incense. Um, they used ambergris. Um, modern Egypt even uses uh, ambergris for scenting cigarettes. Now that's probably become too expensive nowadays, but maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago they did. Um, and the ancient Chinese called the substance dragon spittle. Um, so it's a, it's a substance that resonates throughout, you know, it's like an archetype substance, generation after generation after generation, they know about ambergris. Um, they use dogs to actually hunt this stuff down because dogs can smell ambergris on the beaches. Uh, they can sniff it out like a bomb smelling dog kind of thing. Um, so it, I'm very intrigued by the substance. Ambergris in general really intrigues me because... Some of the old creeds that I love so much have this ambergris shine to them that the new ones, the reformulated ones, don't have. Um, it's missing from 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 stuff from the new the, the new stuff. You know, there is no there is no sparkle to this. There's synthetic. This is synthetic. This is you know, while while it very well may smell good, and while the musks may be high quality, and there may be LME and all this other stuff in here, the, the that sparkly sheen from modern blue fragrances is gone. But you get it in the niche versions. Either one. Um, again, I don't want to make this about Les and Demo Dablas, but they're a house that uses real ambergris, a big portion. You get that same sparkle in Atlantic ambergris, both of them. Um, it's a, it's a, this is a very unique experience for me because, um, I really appreciate a house, uh, that does a limited release like this on one hand, because there's no way they could do Atlantic ambergris and keep it the same fragrance for a decade and just put it out every year. It would be impossible because of the natural ingredients. It would be completely different. They have to do Atlantic Ambergris 1, Atlantic Ambergris 2. It would be great if the House of Arise Ladore got big enough to where they could do an Atlantic Ambergris every year, like a wine, like a, you know, like a champagne um, release, like Atlantic Ambergris 2022, Atlantic Ambergris 2023. And every year you knew it was going to be a little bit different, you know, um, that kind of thing. That would be fantastic. Um, but I guess it's just a little tough to do with the material in such high supply. Um, but I really appreciate smelling this. Um, and we are getting close to a thousand subscribers. I've, I've said it before. My subscriber base has just absolutely, uh, bowled me over with how amazing they are, how knowledgeable they are, um, how generous they are. I mean, she sent me a fragrance that you can't even get anymore. Not even if you wanted to. They're selling this stuff on eBay for $500. Um, so it's a real joy to have made connections like that. Uh, I, I really 
Um, I'm, I'm really grateful because I've said it before, but you know, uh, in early in my journey, it was all about what I wore and enjoying it and wearing it. And now, you know, I feel like you guys have put so much faith and trust in me that I have some sort of, um, you know, I have some sort of commitment to you to, to really do, uh, to do these reviews and do them well and, and take time and talk about it. All that stuff matters now to me. So, um, I'm trying to do a video every single day. I'm in the groove of doing one every single day. I don't know if that's going to be able to continue for the long, long term, since I will have to go back to the office soon. The days of working from home from COVID are starting to wind down. Um, but, you know, it's I'm still going to do my best to put out as many videos as I can. And I have so many samples to go through. She also sent me, by the way, um, Maurice Roussel's L'Instant de Guerlain from 2003 or 5. I can't remember. This is the women's version. Uh, I don't know if this is the EDT or the EDP. Drop me a message, Rachel, if you know which one this is, because I'd like to know if it's the EDT or the EDP. Um, and she sent me 24 Fauberg, which I've never smelled. Very excited to smell this. Um, and she sent me some decants as well. And so, um, 24 Falberg is one that I, uh, am very excited to get to smell. I've never had a chance to smell this one. A lot of people talk about it kind of thing. So that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of generosity that it's unbelievable. So, um, when we get to a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do something special for you guys. I'm going to, um, do my top 100 countdown. The list is ready. Once we hit a thousand subs, I'm gonna drop it. I think you guys are gonna love it. Uh, I think some of it's gonna shock you. Some of it's gonna be like, okay, yep, he's talked about that fragrance a million times. That makes sense. Um, and so I'm ready to get that knocked out. We're very close. We'll probably get there in the next couple of days if the trend continues. So again, I want to thank all you guys for your support, continued support, continued, um, you know, watching, commenting, words of encouragement. They really lift me up. And, um, you know, it, 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 this whole thing that we started, our thing, we'll call it the perfume thing. Um, it's kind of morphed into something else. It's morphed into something bigger than just perfume for me. And so, um, because I made so many great connections and friends and never would have thought in a million years that it, it, it would turn into something like this. So this will be a shorter video than usual, mostly because, I don't know if I, I don't feel like I have the words to, I don't feel like I have the words to describe this. The only extra thing I will say about this that I don't think I mentioned, because I did make notes, but I didn't really talk about anything I mentioned on the notes, is that at about the three hour mark that you really get more of that animalic ambergris to me, something, um, something a little a little more dirty starts to peek through, a little more animalic, you know, almost like you're smelling the, the, um, like you're smelling the, uh, last meal of the sperm whale, you're smelling the breath of the sperm whale, or something like that, you know, something animalic starts to kind of raise its head to the surface, and then it's just drowned out by all the other resinous notes, so very interesting fragrance. I, um, I, I can, as my experience with the House of Arise Lodori has gone on, I can see why people just blind buy these. Uh, because when, when they hit, you know, it's, this is primo stuff here. Um, but I can now say that before, if you said, hey, what's a good real ambergris fragrance to try? I would just say, get Ombre Supreme. That's the one. Now I can say, Get Ombre Supreme or Atlantic Ambergris if you can find it. It's very hard to find. Very hard to find. Um, and if you do find it, you're going to pay pretty big money. But if you have the money to blow, I'll tell you what. It's a beautiful, completely different take than um, Ombre Supreme. They are not. Um, they are not redundant by any stretch of the imagination. So. Thank you all for watching. I uh, can't wait to hit the thousand subscribers so we can drop that uh, this this top 100 uh, video that I've been working on. It's gonna be it's gonna be a monumental task doing that. But 
I'm going to do it for you guys and because I want to do it. I, want, I think you guys will really enjoy it. So cheers. Thanks for watching. See you again tomorrow with another video. Bye guys.